Let us pray for the following intentions. For the speedy recovery of Dr. Elizabeth Habilio, Alice Magpantay, Alice Magana, Selina De Leon, Jareth Vintosa, Olay Madridejos. For the eternal repose of the souls of John by Brian Ilaw, Francis Miranda, Jose Gadong. And for all the souls enrolled in St. Michael's Pious Union, and for all the souls in Purgatory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, thus should one regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. 
Now it is of course required of stewards that they may be found trustworthy. It does not concern me in the least that I be judged by you or any human tribunal. I do not even pass judgment on myself. I am not conscious of anything against me, but I do not thereby stand acquitted. The one who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, do not make any judgment before the appointed time until the Lord comes, for he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will manifest the motives of our hearts and then everyone will receive praise from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed with security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's requests. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Commit to the Lord your way. Trust Him, and He will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light. Bright as the noonday shall be your vindication. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Turn from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. For the Lord loves what is right and forsakes not his faithful ones. Criminals are destroyed and the posterity of the wicked is cut off. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is the refuge in time of distress, and the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them, because they take refuge in Him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, The disciples of John the Baptist fast often and offer prayers, and the disciples of the Pharisees do the same, but yours eat and drink. Jesus answered them, Can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come, and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. And he also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new cloak to patch an old one. 
Otherwise, he will tear the new, and the piece from it will not match the old cloak. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be ruined. Rather, new wine must be poured into fresh wine skins, and no one who has been drinking old wine desires new, for he says, the old is good. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Having faith in God or having faith in Jesus does not make us powerful, humanly speaking. Hindi porke nananampalatay tayo sa Diyos, meron tayong Diyos na pinaniniwalaan, ay hindi na tayo magkakaroon ng mga problema. Dahil ang mga ito ay dulot hindi ng kawalan ng kontrol ng Diyos sa ating buhay, kundi dulot ng ating kahinaan at kakulangan. Now, what does faith do to us? Alam nyo, kapag tayo nananampalataya, ang ibinibigay sa atin ito, ang idinudulot nito sa atin, kahit pa paano, kapag tayo nagkakaroon ng maraming suliranin, kapag meron tayong Diyos na pinaniniwalaan, kahit pa paano, meron tayong peace na nararamdaman sa ating buhay. Nagkakaroon pa rin tayo ng lakas ng loob at paniniwala na lilipas ang lahat ng ito. Bakit? Dahil meron tayong Diyos na pinaniniwalaan. Kaya nga, ang sabi, sa, ang sabi ni Jesus sa mga scribes and Pharisees, Can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? Ang tanong sa atin mga kapatid ay ito. Tayong nananampalatay sa Diyos. Tayong naniniwala na may Diyos na gumagabay sa atin. May Diyos na mas malakas kaysa sa atin. Panghihinaan pa ba tayo ng loob? Kung tayo ay naniniwala. Kaya nga may yung mga tao na nadidepress na nagdudulot hanggang sa pagpapakamatay, ay ito yung mga taong nawala ng tiwala siguro, na hindi nila na-realize na meron pa palang Diyos na gagawa ng paraan. At tayo na nandito pa sa mundong ito, tayo na palaging nananampalataya, araw-araw tayo nagsisimba, araw-araw nating tinatanggap sa Jesus, nawa ay magkaroon tayo ng, ng sense, yung tindi ng pananampalataya. Na palagi nating iisipin, merong Diyos. Kasama ko ang Diyos. Ginagabayan ako ng Diyos. Ano pa ang epekto ng ating pananampalataya? Kapag tayo ay merong peace of mind, kapag tayo ay naniniwalang ang lahat ay lilipas, kapag tayo ay hindi nag-aalala, dulot ng ating pananampalataya. Kung minsan, ang nagiging resulta nito ay positivity. Kung minsan, ang nagiging resulta ng pananampalataya sa atin, hindi tayo nag-iisip o hindi tayo nag-aatubiling magbigay. Hindi tayo nag-aatubiling magpatawad sa ibang tao. Dahil ang pananampalataya ay nagdudulot din sa atin ng conversion. Kaya nga sa paglalim ng ating pananampalataya ay sa paglalim din ng ating pagbabago, sa pagtindiri ng ating conversion. Na dahil ako'y nananampalataya sa Diyos, magiging mabuti akong tao. Kaya nga mga kapatid, ang sabi ni Jesus, wala daw nagtatagpi ng luma, ng lumang tela sa bagong damit. Sa ating pagnilay, mga kapatid, ang tanong natin ay ito, ako ba ay bagong tao na? Ako ba dahilan sa aking pananampalataya ay nagbago na ng aking mga gawi? Matagal na natin pinagninilay noong manakarang araw, 
mas mabait ba ako ngayon? Mas nagpapatawad na ba ako, ba ako ngayon? Mas nagbibigay na ba ako? Kung ang sagot ay oo, mga kapatid, din huwag na tayong bumalik sa luma. Huwag na tayong bumalik sa dati na takot magbigay, takot magpatawad, takot magmahal. Yan mga kapatid, ang dulot sa atin ng pananampalataya at ipanalangin natin na Panginoon, bigyan mo kami ng lakas ng loob para ipagpatuloy ang buhay kabanalan. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son, you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration, as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gilbert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Francis Caracciolo, our founder, and all the saints you have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Pray of hope amid the COVID-19 pandemic. All together, God our Father, our lives seem to be darker as fear, panic, and paranoia. Found the flames of uncertainty, we do not know how tomorrow will unfold. In this time of uncertainty, we are in dire need of your divine intervention to help us strengthen our faith amidst the feelings of hopelessness. May we always strive to trust in you so that goodness and compassion will prevail over selfishness and personal interests. We ask for your mercy to give us strength of mind and body to overcome the temptation of laziness and boredom so that we may continue to keep the fire of hope and faith alive. Send us your spirit so that we may know and discern your holy will. May our practice of Christian charity help us find our closeness to each other through our awareness of our brothers' and sisters' basic needs for their daily living. May our beloved St. Francis Caracciolo, the patron saint of chefs in Italy, not allow anyone to go hungry, both spiritually and physically, though due to this pandemic, we are unable to physically attend the Holy Mass. May the ardent zeal of St. Francis form within our households at through the domestic church. May we, during this time of absence, develop within our hearts a fervent zeal for the Holy Eucharist. May the cleric's regular minor carry along today the same spirit of zeal that St. Francis Caracciolo possessed. May this be expressed in the healing touch of assisting the poor and comforting the sick, the dying and the distressed. Help us to be truly the family you called us to be, united in hope, faith, and love. May this experience lead us from Calvary to the glory of the rising Christ in resurrection. These things we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and steer us to serve you and our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ.